I don't like going to parties, hanging out with people can stress me out sometimes, you know, phone calls, whatever. It was like silly little stuff that I didn't think was a big deal, but so many people started to connect with that and identify with that. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's q and I'm here with Elizabeth from The Greater Good. Hello, Elizabeth. Hey, how are you doing? Good, good, good. Super excited to have you on. Um, for those people who don't know who Elizabeth is somehow magically, she is <laughs> killing it on social media, on Instagram specifically, and getting like, it's actually incredible the number of people who like are engaging with your post and liking your stuff. It's just like, it was amazing. So it's impressive. Good for you. Well, thanks. Coming from um, you, that means a lot. <laughs> so, yeah, so we're going to be talking about just that today, um, how Elizabeth has managed to do this and grow mm -hmm. her social media so huge and get all this engagement because I feel like that's what everybody's wanting to know these days is how to crack that code on Instagram and social me. media. Yeah, Sorry. so we're going to get into that. And um, Elizabeth is going to be talking to us about exactly how to find your sweet spot and your secret sauce. If you saw my episode with Scotty Russell a couple episodes back. So we're going to be getting into that. But just before we do, I want to remind everybody, as always, that if you're seeing this within the first 24 hours, make sure you leave a comment down below and you'll be entered to win some brush pens. And also check the caption right below this video and see if you won last week if you commented. Um, but yeah, I think without further ado, we should just jump right in. So Elizabeth, we talked a lot about how your account has blown up already, but, mm -hmm. um, it must not have always been like that. So can we go back a little bit to like how this all started for you and what it was like maybe a couple years ago? Okay. Um, I think I kind of did what we all did. It was like, Oh, see lettering on social media in different places. That looks like fun. Maybe I should try that. So, you know, throw up random pictures, but didn't really have a purpose or direction, but I really enjoyed it. So I kept posting and engaging with the community and I was like, okay, this is fun. Maybe this is really what I want to do. And I think not that I wasn't being authentic, but I kept posting things that I think people wanted to hear and see from me, as opposed to how I really felt about stuff and getting deeper into not just the surface level, but deeper than that and just being really honest about okay it's like I don't feel great today or I'm super lonely right now like not complaining but just being really honest about how things feel and how that goes and once I started to talk about you know okay so I'm an introvert I don't like going to parties hanging out with people can stress me out sometimes you know phone calls whatever it was like silly little stuff that I didn't think was a big deal but so many people started to connect with that and identify with that and that, I think that's really when things kind of started to take off because I was finding my voice and being really honest. And like, I had something to talk about that was meaningful. So, so how long ago did you start lettering? I think about three years ago. So and like you, the very first post. And you started your Instagram account, like pretty closely after that, just posting your work and stuff. Yes. I had, you know, the random personal, you know, husband photos, cat photos, whatever but then the lettering started to just take over and this is what it is now. Okay. Yeah. So not only were you kind of like honing your voice, but you were also getting better at lettering, obviously. So it was probably exactly. a combination of the two things, but did you notice, mm -hmm. like, is there, was there a point where you purposely sat down and were like, okay, I'm going to start posting just these certain themes or did it kind of grow organically into that? Um, it happened after I watched a Jana Kutcher webinar, which she's amazing at every single social media platform. Like she's killer at what she does. Um, and she was talking about having, if you're wondering about, you know, what to post, what do I do? Having different topics, like five buckets or like whatever number that you want to talk about, having these topics that you talk about consistently. So not only do you always have ideas and inspiration something to draw from but your message stays consistent as well across your feed and your posts gotcha okay yeah. so we i mean we kind of just jumped right into all of the information <laughs> here but i think we should back yeah. up a little bit so why is having a sweet spot or a secret sauce so important i think there's at least three things that make it really important um number one is consistency because your audience we're talking about artists on Instagram, your audience likes to know what to expect. Not that you're going to put up the same thing every time, but you're going to be consistent with your message across everything. Um, accountability is really good because 
it keeps you, if you have these topics that you talk about, it's, it keeps you accountable, not only to them, but like to yourself to continue creating and continue, you know, just figuring out who you are and, um, inspiration as well. Sorry, I have notes, um, inspiration, because if you have your secret sauce and your voice and your themes, and you always have something to talk about and to draw from, and you're not just like, Oh, what am I going to do today? You always I find that the most important part for like knowing what your kind of buckets are, like we had said mm -hmm. earlier, because I, I mean, I look around me in my studio right now and there's like 8 mm -hmm. million different art supplies that I could use. And there's like mm -hmm. four different colors of paper just on my desk right here and like nine mm -hmm. different kinds of water brushes and stuff. Like I sit down and I get like paralyzed by all the options that yes. I could create. But like, should I make a video? Should I make it just do a picture? Should I do a story? I don't know. What are people going to like? Like, it's so, it's so paralyzing. So when you have those exact buckets or themes that mm -hmm. you talk about and that people expect from you, not only is it easier for you to create and to sit down mm -hmm. and like, okay, people like it when I do this and I like doing this. Perfect. Put those things together exactly. and create them. So not only does it make it easier, but it also like, like you said, it's the consistency. So people, you know, I post something like that. People know, oh, that's Becca's or like yours is a very good example okay. of that. If anybody's watching this and still hasn't gone and looked at Elizabeth's <laughs> Instagram, I feel like anytime one of your pictures comes up, it's like, oh, that's Elizabeth. Like you just know, and that's what you're going for. Like, that's what you exactly. want people to, to notice. Exactly. For sure. I mean, there's so many, I think we could get into like a million different benefits for why finding your secret sauce is, is mm -hmm. awesome. But I think the, for me, the most important part is that it makes it easier for me to create and it makes it yes. easier for people to recognize my style. Really. I think that's, you summed it up perfectly. <laughs> okay. So we know why it's important. Mm -hmm. And I think that I'm going to let you just run with tips for how people can find mm -hmm. their own secret sauce because it's not that easy like you said it took you a couple years it's definitely mm -hmm. taken me a couple years and I can't say that mine is perfect I still sit down and have those days where I'm like oh, I don't know what to create so I'm excited to hear your tips mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd say the most important thing to start out with number one is make a list of all the good things all the bad things all the things you like maybe even the things you don't like just sit down pen and paper nitty-gritty just like make a list bring them anything from your favorite animal or like your current pet that you have, uh, your favorite color, little things like that, that are a big deal and you can, that are important and you can work into your art and your voice and your feed or something more complicated, such as like the way um, in my house right now, the way there's, we have got like a 1940s cut out glass in our door not sure exactly what it's called, but at a certain time in the morning, this rainbow comes in and just shines across the kitchen floor for about 10 minutes. And it's just really cool. Like writing down those little things that you appreciate at little moments that make you happy, things that make your life wonderful and worth living, all those things, just like sit down and brain them and write all those out. Um, you can even text your friend because you know, they're going to see things that you don't see, but, um, just making a list. And I feel like, yeah especially now because you can also use stories you can kind of play mm -hmm. with those things and I noticed like, like yes. a good example of yours is like you do a story of you pouring coffee like okay mm -hmm. we know you like coffee and like a slow moody song with your coffee mm -hmm. you know like those are exactly. things that, that people just pick up on and it's not necessarily that that's anything like revolutionary but it's mm -hmm. building up you and like why people know you mm -hmm. that's a good story of like how I found one of my things because I did that one morning just because that's the kind of music I like I pour coffee every morning why not turn it into a story and people are like oh my goodness I love this it was so relaxing it was so much fun and now I think I've been doing it almost every day for a year like it's now one of my things so you never know that's why it's good to experiment and try all the things I think step two would just be going over circling at least five to ten things things that make sense for you to talk about things that you can easily you know show on social media you can photograph them like it would make sense and it's very authentic and honest like this is not everything that makes up you but it's so many things that make up who you are how can you use that to find your voice and tell your story and be consistent um and i think things for like when you're going back and circling which ones are important like which mm -hmm. ones are which ones are broad enough to be something that you can talk yes. about all the time without you know like really making it to it's like 
I'm going to talk mm -hmm. about just the perfect tip of this pen. Like you can only talk about that <laughs> once. You need something right. that will allow you to talk about it more than once. Exactly. And then um, three is just do the dang thing. Like start posting. You don't have to be perfect. That's what the consistency and the practice is all about. You're going to get better as you go along and people are really going to enjoy being there for your story and your journey. Um, I had someone tell me that I came for the art, but I stayed for your story. And that has just always stuck with me and meant a lot to me and really encouraged me to keep doing what I'm doing. So, and then four is just rotate between them, all your topics that you have picked out and you're posting about it. So now you can rotate between them, whether it's, you know, it's all of the same order every single time, or you just kind of go back and forth. I'd say probably not, but you know, two posts about the same thing next to each other. You know, try to keep it different, but whatever works for you. I always just kind of post whatever I'm feeling that day, just because that's very me and how I do it. But y'all can do it however you want to do. Do you use any scheduling softwares or anything like that? Or you just post one at a time? I don't. I have a private Instagram account, actually, that I will try to schedule things on. And it's just like, you know, a random username, no followers, nothing. It's just private. And that's how I organize things. But um, I know some people use later. And some people use Planoly, so those are good ones to check out. Yeah, actually, I just heard of a new one too called Plan. I think it just has two. Ooh. It's Plan with two ends or three ends or something like that okay. that I heard is good. But but yeah, so for people who are listening who are wondering about that, like if you're a person who maybe wants to create ten posts all at a time and not mm -hmm. have to every day go in and post them, um, you can actually yes. upload all your stuff into there and put it mm -hmm. in, and you can see what the feed will look like, which is really nice for kind of type A personalities. Mm -hmm. Um, however, I yeah. don't do that. I just, I go on and I, I post it as I go. I feel like, first mm -hmm. of all, I just have this weird thing where I don't trust the technology to work properly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I also like, I, I feel more, uh, engaged with it and like on top of it when mm -hmm. I do it myself or I sit there, you know, I post it and then I ask a question in the caption and I go back and actually mm -hmm. answer them and like them and engage with them and stuff. So I don't know. I'm, I'm big on engagement and I think that that's like huge on Instagram now. So yes. there's something to be said for knowing what your feed is going to look like. But I think mm -hmm. that for me, it's more important to actually be in the thing and doing the dang thing. Like you said. Yes, <laughs> I agree. Um, I don't like to do what I call post and ghost. So throw up your video, or whatever, and then don't reply to any comments. You don't do anything like that because people are taking time out of their day to talk to you and engage with you and comment and direct message. And if you truly want to grow, then you need to value your audience and the people you have, whether you have 1000 or 10,000, you need to appreciate the people who are there. And like you said, engage with them and talk with them. Those are your friends, your peers, your community, and you want to be a part of that. So I think if you're wanting to grow as an artist on Instagram, you really need to set some time aside and be like, okay, I do need to devote time to engaging with people because that makes all the difference. And then um, the fifth tip that I have written down is analyze. So, okay, do that for a while, a month, three months, see what's working, see what topic is still, you know, broad enough. You have tons of source material to talk about and work from. Um, maybe something's really hard for you to talk about or it's just not quite working. So go back to your list and figure out what else you can put into rotation so then you can take the other things out and just, you know, keep growing and trying things and just have fun with it. I think, yeah, the, that last one about finding something that, like, if there's anything in that list that you've been posting about for a couple mm -hmm. months now and you realize, like, ugh, every Tuesday when I have to make a post about my cat, I just, you know, mm -hmm. I'm really sick of my cat and I don't feel like doing it anymore. Like, the, mm -hmm. I mean, that would never happen, but that's right. Um, but, like, things that, if something's just not sitting well, it's like, uh, mm -hmm. maybe it's performing really well, but it's, it's annoying for you to do it. It's just not going to be yeah. sustainable. So you have to figure out what actually fuels you up and like makes mm -hmm. you want to post about it yeah, um, and that's gonna change over time and that's okay yeah so okay so you went through your five steps of how to actually mm -hmm. find your own sweet sauce and do all that stuff so you've analyzed it and all of that and I know okay. that obviously you've done your own analysis of what's working and what's not working for you so mm -hmm. I'm just curious if you have any like speed round fast tips that you've noticed make a difference in in your own stuff and how you've been able to grow yours so fast? Um, I think it's not only, you know, you have the consistency across your five topics, but for Instagram, it's very visual. So consistency across, 
your feet as well, whether um, it's the same color scheme. Like I really like using black and white, um, not only because two favorite colors, people fight me on that. I know they're not a color, but um, they're my two favorite colors to use. And I think that having that limitation actually helps with creativity. So you don't get paralysis from too many decisions. And I just really enjoy using those. So like I have a consistent color scheme, not only in my work, but in my editing style. Um, using maybe not the same edits, but at least the same filter on every post just to create consistent whites and undertones and the same color blacks, you know, whether it's warm or cool, keeping that consistent through everything. Um, and also storytelling. So you're being consistent with your topics and you're being consistent with your style of photos and your editing and your colors, but also creating context within the caption and not just throwing up a photo and saying nothing. I've seen photo photos like that. I'm like, okay, you know, what's going on? Um, maybe you throw up a photo of your sketchbook. I'm like, okay, how are you feeling? What inspired this post? Was it rainy outside? Like giving context to bring everything full circle. For sure. Yeah. No, that all makes a lot of sense. I, I think it's, I feel like I could talk about this topic forever because mm -hmm. Instagram continues to like blow my mind and change every day and everything. So those were the five things, like your five steps to actually mm -hmm. finding your own secret sauce um, or sweet spot, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it. I keep using Scotty's term, <laughs> sweet or secret sauce, his pizza stuff. Um, He's good at that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If anybody hasn't seen that one, it's a couple episodes back with Scotty Russell. I'll link to it down below, but um, yeah. So finding your own secret sauce, why it's important, how to, how to get through that and, you know, analyzing it, playing with it, and then hopefully blowing up your Instagram account like Elizabeth has. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much, Elizabeth, for coming on here. Um, where is the best place for people to find you? Obviously um, right it's now, Instagram, but yeah. Well, working on my website, but yeah, right now, Instagram at the greater good, just spelled G-R-A-Y-T-E-R. -E so. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, everybody go check out Elizabeth's uh, Instagram and I guarantee you'll see her <laughs> buckets and her themes and all of the stuff we've been talking about in here. So thanks again so much, Elizabeth, for coming on and we'll talk to you later. Of course. It's good to talk. See you later.